we're so glad to see you here today. Uh, a couple of announcements. Um, uh, the the, <laughs> the hiring team is interviewing somebody else this week. She's absolutely lovely, which is great. Um, and then our other candidate withdrew his uh, application. Thank you, Dr. Patty. Um, but with Drew's application, we just weren't the church for him. <laughs> so I kind of thought we were the church for him, <laughs> but he didn't. And so onward, we're, we're chugging along. Um, just a reminder, if you have a need that we're not picking up on, which we, our sort of church kind of does pick up on needs, but if you have a need we're not picking up on, tell, tell people, tell, our deacons are ready and waiting to, to come in and our church we support each other we help each other so now more than ever it's really important if you have a need make sure it is known we will we will come with many arms and many hearts um, and so we're just going to chug along and just as I keep saying please just pray for our church pray for the wisdom of the hiring team pray that just the right person who will love and shepherd our church will come um, will come to us and so, I don't think there's any other announcements. Rummage sale is coming up, people. Save your boxes. Gird up your loins. <laughs> um, are they? Mine aren't yet, but they will be. All right. Um, okay. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Take a deep breath. Treat yourself to just being here, and let us celebrate and be in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit because of the glory of the Father and the deep, deep love that the Savior has for us. together today and we remember that God calls us to be together. We come, come together today and remember that God is with us. We come together today and we remember that God supplies and fuels the love we have for each other. We come together today and we ask God to help us to love. We come together today knowing that God has allowed us to be God's people, holy and dearly loved. We come together today, asking God to help us to be God's people, holy and full of love. We come together today, knowing that we need this time together to learn about our good God, so that we might love as God loves, be full of the joy of the Lord, and serve as God desires us to serve. Now hear the prayer of the Lord. Lord, you are holy and good. You are filled with love and compassion. You forgive us and move us to love others with your love. Open the eyes of our hearts and our minds, Lord. Let our learning be worship. Let our togetherness be worship. Let our service be worship. When we lift our voices together to sing, let us remember that everything we do and say in this world can be worship. For you are with us always. Amen. Amen. Now please 
stand and join in a hymn in Christ alone. continue to sin. Thank you for continuing to forgive. Let us walk in that forgiveness. Let our hearts be free. Amen. Now the first scripture reading comes from Psalm 4, verses 1 through 8. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You give me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me. And hear my prayer. <clears throat> How long, you people, shall my honor suffer shame? 
How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? So I. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord knows when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your bed and be silent. So I. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, Oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
you so much, Clara. That was beautiful. And now, while the choir makes their way into the pews, will the children come on up? And as that's going on, let's take a moment to offer each other our greetings and our peace. Come on, anybody who wants to come up, come on up and have a seat. Okay, hello my friends. So all of my friends are welcome to come up here if you all could just have a seat. Hello, hello, hello. So So the past couple of weeks have been full of rain. Right? We had a whole spring break full of rain, and then we had a really nice day, and then we went right back to rain. And rainy days mean you're not playing outside, right? Rainy days mean you're not going on your bike. Most rainy days mean that you're stuck inside. Did you have something to say about rainy days? What did you have to say? They take away the pollen. That <laughs> is true. My friend over here, along with some other ones of us, know that rain actually helps us with our allergies. But for a lot of us, rainy days mean that they're just pretty crummy, pretty crummy days. But a lot of rain also means something else. A lot of rain means that pretty soon, the grass is gonna be greener, the flowers are going to be blooming in the ground. They're going to be blooming in the trees. The birds even sound louder. And we get to see all of God's creation in full bloom. Spring is right around the corner, and we get to see God's best work bright for us. So I thought today, simply, we would just do a little prayer, thanking God for his beautiful creation. Yes. When is a rainy day you feel like to stay inside? That's right. On rainy days, a lot of us feel like staying inside. But pretty soon we get to go outside, hopefully with our allergy medication, and we get to enjoy God's creation. So I'm going to teach you the prayer first, and then I'm going to invite you to stand up and do it with me. You all are welcome to if you want to get your bodies moving a little bit this morning. So here's how it goes. You're going to go, thank you, God, for all that grows. Thank you for the skies, rainbows. Thank you for the skies, rainbows. Thank you for the stars that shine. Thank you for the stars that shine. Thank you for these friends of mine. Thank you for these friends of mine. And we get to high five. You're not too old for high five. High five, high five. <laughs> Thank you for the moon and sun. Thank you for the moon and sun. Thank you, God, for all you've done. Thank you, God, for all you've done. Amen. Amen. Pretty simple. I'm going to invite you to stand up. I'll still do a repeat after me. And we'll just do it all together. Adults, if you want to get your bodies moving and you're able, you are free to stand up with us and pray with us. It's okay to be a kid sometimes. All right, are we ready? I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you, God, for all that grows. Thank you for the skies, rainbows. Thank you for the stars that shine. Thank you for these friends of mine. Whoa. High five, high five, high five. 
Thank you for the moon and sun. Thank you, God, for all you've done. Amen, and happy almost spring. Okay, so my friends, you can go ahead down to Faith Quest. Sixth graders and up can come on down with me to the youth room. reading is a reading from the first letter of John. Listen for God's word. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed, but what we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Let's pray. Father God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you. May the words of all of our mouths and all the meditations of all of our hearts please you because you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So um, the, uh, that picture up there, um, I was teasing Bob Scheffler earlier that um, when I did all the math and all the research on the railroad ties, he went back and checked my math and checked my research and pronounced me correct, which I really appreciated. And so I had in mind to tell you a little bit about mountain climbing um, as an illustration to begin this sermon, um, and then to ask Bob Scheffler to check my <laughs> But I got so exhausted and so overwhelmed at the ideas of what it is to be a successful mountain climber that I decided to stop researching. And I'm going to ask Dr. Um, Bob Scheffler to help me out in other ways and other times. So my main sort of thing was when you are mountain climbing like that, like how, how do you get the thing that you're attached to, right? So this is where it got dizzying. I, there's lots of ways, and I'm not going to share them with you, but it was dizzying and almost made me want to cry, like to think about how scary and terrifying that is, because that thing you, that he's attached to, it has to hold. How in the world do we get that up there? How does it hold? It's, it's terrifying. But really, it is a great illustration of what our lives are like. Is it going to hold? What's going to hold? For years, I uh, ministered at Paragon Village. And I would go um, once a week, and I would talk to the people there about Jesus. And one of our favorite things to say was, you know, life it is unpredictable. Life is as shaky and as unpredictable as a fiddler. Oh. And they loved that. 
Some of them would be asleep in the corner, and as soon as I would say that, they'd wake up to say, on the roof. But the other thing that was so interesting about saying that in that setting is that these are people who have had an enormous amount of life experience. And when you say, life is as shaky and as tenuous as a fiddler on a roof, they all nod knowingly. Because they, more than anyone, know that though many things in life will hold, we cannot count on any of that. What will hold? Will the dreams you dreamt, the life you wanted to live, hold? No. Might. Your house could crumble around you. Even that might not hold. The dearest of friendships, of relationships, maybe they'll hold. But maybe they won't. We just don't know. Life is as shaky as a fiddler on a roof. Today, I want to talk to you about the one certain thing that holds. We are absolutely certain because of what the Bible tells us, that the one thing we can absolutely rely on that will hold is our status as children of God. Does it really say that? Does that really hold? Can we really count on that? Yes. Our status as children of God Now, when so so in this in this passage today, um, it, it really is a complicating passage. It really is sort of confusing. And and really, when I got to the end of reading it, I thought, is that really what it says? Is that really what the 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 gospels are telling us? And so I want to talk today first about our status as children of God. The second thing that this passage draws us to think about and talk about is our action as children of God. What does our action mean as children of God? And then finally, I want to talk about our vision as children of God. Our status, our action, and our vision. So the first thing that I've already started talking about is our status. Now, usually, when I'm trying to explain something in the Bible, I don't like using the, um, the parent-child metaphor. Talk about how much God loves us by how much you love your children or how much you are loved by your parent. And the reason that that's a problematic parallel is because we all, we all know we're human. And not all parents are good. Not all parenting experiences are as reliable as our parenting experience with God. But in this sense, when we're talking about our status as children of God, it, it actually our human parentage is very helpful. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what happens to you, you are still genetically your parent's child, no matter what. Your children are still your children. That status is the stays. You know, I shouldn't have even said genetically, if you have adopted a child, like you, your status does not change no matter what happens. And that is really, I think, one of the reasons why the Bible uses the metaphor of us as being children of God, because it is so rock solid. It is so firmly fixed that it will not, cannot change. You know, we hear uh, John 3 all the time, you know, football players like putting it on there, you know, faces when they play and whatever, you know, you have to be born again. And um, I think we miss part of the point of that passage because what that passage is actually saying is that we are so much children of God that it is as if we have given up our old status and we are truly born 
as a child of God, reborn. Our status as a child of God is established, it is locked, it is connected as firmly as it possibly can be connected, it will hold. If there is anything to establish, if there is anything to remember, if there's anything to not be confused about, about the Bible, it's that. You will not, cannot, ever, 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 if you are his child, be anything other than that, ever, ever, nothing, case closed. It will hold. Probably the only thing in your life that will. But that will. Now, the second thing that this passage draws us to talk about, then, is our action as children of God. Now, here's where we get confused. Here's where we get a little bit messed up. Because what we do is we think that because our status as children of God goes along with our action, that they are connected. They are not. Our status as a child of God is firmly fixed on its own. If our action as a child of God fails, we are still held. It, our action is not connected to the line that holds us as a child of God. Though they are, they go together, they are not connected. If you screw up, you will still not fall. Because your action that screwed up, your action that fell, is not connected to your status. People get confused about this all the time, though. A wonderful theologian, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who probably most of you have heard about. He was in the resistance movement during World War II, and he was part of a plan to assassinate uh, Adolf Hitler. That plan failed, and Bonhoeffer died in a concentration camp. But he wrote one of the most helpful, he wrote incredibly amounts of helpful things. Um, but the, um, he wrote a book called The Cost of Discipleship, and one chapter in that is called Cheap Grace, and he explains how very damaging it is to, to say to the church that we mustn't worry about our action, that all we need to worry about is the fact that we are saved and that our status of, of being children of God is firmly fixed and that our action is superfluous because it would seem that then we are telling each other that our action adds somehow to our salvation. But Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote that that's really harmful because our action as children of God is life-giving. We're made to do good things. And for us to be told that we shouldn't worry about doing those good things because our status as a child of God is not impacted by them is confusing. We're made to do good things. And so, when we read this passage that we read today, and we think, does it really say that? Does it really tell us, don't sin? Don't sin. Be like Jesus and don't sin. Be righteous. When we read the Sermon on the Mount, is it telling us to actually do those things? Yes. It's actually telling us that we should not sin. It is actually telling us that the things that are said in the Sermon on the Mount are actually things that we need to strive for. Now, I've talked about this a whole lot before. Uh, it's one of my favorite ways to explain things. To be a child of God, to be, have that status, is a really, really low bar. All you need to be a child of God is to want to be a child of God. That's it. That's it. Really, really low bar. Really easy. But our action as children of God 
is an incredibly high bar. Don't sin. That Sermon on the Mount, Jesus meant it. It is an incredibly high bar. We have to really believe that it is okay for us to strive for that. To climb higher and higher and higher. To walk our lives trying more and more and more to not sin. To do what Jesus did. And when you fall, when you fail, because you will fail, because your action line is not connected to your status line, when you fall, you will be caught. <laughs> you will fall. Because in your struggle against sin, you will fail. In your trying to be like Jesus, it will not work. You will fall, but it will hold. <clears throat> your status as a child of God is completely immovable. Now finally, our vision the higher you climb, the longer you walk with the Lord, the more you try not to sin, the more you try to love like crazy, like Jesus loved, the higher you climb, the better the vision, the more you see. You see more clearly the things that Jesus wants us to see. You see the world with a better perspective, and you understand how dearly important it is to be people of love. But here's the other thing, and we talk about this a lot in Bible study too, and it sounds like a little bit prideful. You, as you try to climb higher, as you try to do better, you actually will. You will. If you walk hard with Jesus for a year, Try not to sin. Try to act like him. After a year, you will be more like him. You will have climbed higher. Your vision for the things that you want, for sin, for the love of this world, will be more aligned with his vision. You will see things more clearly. But because that line is not connected to the line that holds your status as a child. When you lose that vision, when something happens in your life that isn't just your own screw up, that is something that causes you to question everything, that causes all of the growth that you have ever grown to fall into jeopardy, to cause you to wonder if what you have seen is even what is true. A hard fall. Bam! You will not fall. It will hold. Even if you lose your vision, even if you plummet from the height that you have climbed to, and you will climb, and you will attain a height, and you will see more, even if that fails, it will hold. Because your status as a child of God will always hold. When your action fails, when your action succeeds, it will hold. When your vision fails, when your vision succeeds, it will hold. It really does say that. It really is there. And it is perhaps the only thing that you can be certain.
Now, children, they dream big. They see big. When they jump into a pool, it can be an ocean. When they jump off a swing, remember swinging and jumping off a swing? It's flying. When blankets are laid on the floor, their rock formations and the carpet is hot lava. You can fly, you can swim, you can run, you can think huge and awesome. When we, when we get older, we stop thinking that way. We're worried about what's gonna hold, right? Life becomes more scary. So I would say, when we think about the fact that our status as a child of God is immovable, that just for today maybe, climb into Jesus' arms like a child and think really big. This isn't the stuff of hot lava and blankets. This is real. Think really big. Set out to not sin. Set out to love like crazy. And if it doesn't hold, if that, if you fail, you're still tight, 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 tight in his arms, no matter what. So heck, go crazy, you crazy kids. Love like crazy. This is the time in our service where Helene is going to play and we are going to gather about prayer cards. But um, we had a worship committee meeting this past week and we are going to bring back the verbal prayer request. So if, you, if you'd like to share your prayer request verbally, just raise your hand and we can do that after we've collected the prayer cards. If you don't want to do that, that's great. Just put your prayer request on the prayer card and they will be collected, but before I share the prayer cards, I will gather, if you'd like, your verbal prayer requests.
prayer requests from the floor. Okay, you know, Chris, I'll just repeat it. Thank you, though. Your brother, Chris. Michael. Michael. I'm doing a good job already of repeating it. Prayers for Florence's brother, Michael, who is making some bad choices. Prayers for Megan and Lucius, a safe return from Spain, um, and a safe handover from the um, grandparents to the parents of the children. Patty? Uh, prayers for my sister, Ginger. She struggled with Parkinson's, and she continues to struggle, but I need to say blessings for her. Okay. Prayers for Patty's sister, Ginger, who is struggling with Parkinson's. Prayers for peace in the Middle East. Yes. Okay. Um, a joy that my husband's surgery went well, and now prayers for healing that they'll be restored to normal. Amen. Amen. Prayers for Mike for his surgery and healing, and that it's over. All right. Let's go to the Lord. Father God, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you so much that you care deeply for each of these things as we do. For precious siblings who are struggling, wandering. Lord, um, help Mike to find his way. Lord, put your arms around Ginger. Thank you for her. Calm her body, Lord. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for medical professionals and for healing and for putting bodies back together. You are the God of shalom, the God of wholeness. We just thank you for that. Father God, we also ask that you be the God of wholeness and shalom all over this world, but especially in your holy land, Lord. Lord, um, bring peace. Lord, bring peace throughout the world. And Lord, um, a joy. Thank you so much that in this very place, this past weekend, Hunter, and Rachel Corbell were married. Um, Father, bless their union. Um, grow them together. Allow them to be the cord of three strands with you at the center. Speaking of cords of three strands, with Mark Sogo, we thank you, Lord, for Nancy, for all she does for the family. And we just thank you so very much for what she does for her family, the church family, the community. Thank you for giving her to Mark. Lord, we thank you and we ask you and we need you for so many things. We call upon you for everything, for our very breath, Lord. Thank you for caring more about that than we ourselves do. Help us to understand your ways. Help us to trust you. Help us to understand in the way that you called us to understand when you taught us to pray. And we remember that prayer and we pray it. Our Father.
service where we offer back our tithes and our offerings.